turn to a break. I feel chains falling right now. I feel chains falling right now. Anybody who's in the deliverance ministry knows that that's a demon that goes into the brain. Fear. Yeah. fear. fear. It's a huge fear demon. Yeah. And I've seen enough fear demons know, to know that it can be cast out. Right. Remotely. We, he don't have to be here to pray for him. Yeah. That's right. He don't have to be here to pray for him. No, he, don't. he can be thousands of miles away. The, the Holy Spirit don't need a boarding pass. Come on, 
to heal anybody, to set anybody free. So we're going to say a quick prayer for our brother Jim Garner. Yep. I had to write his name down because if y'all know me, you know I'm not good with names. That's the truth. <laughs> and my wife confirmed it. <laughs> so Father, we give you glory and we give you praise. We thank you for what you're about to do to brother Jim. We know that your healing angels, the delivering angels, are on their way right now. That's right. That that PTSD is a lie from Satan, and we bind that lie right now in the mighty name of Yeshua. That's right. And that lie right. needs to come out of him right now. That now. lie yeah. is destroyed yeah. right now yeah. by the power and the glory of the yeah. Christ. Yeah. PTSD, you are a liar. Yeah. Yeah. That you are a liar in the mighty name of Yeshua. Yeah. We cast you out in yeah. the mighty name of Yeshua. Shia's glorious, yes. holy, Shia. and beautiful name. Oh, Amen. Yes. Freedom. 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 If you don't know anything about the spirit world before you leave here, you will know something about the spirit world. You will know something about the spirit world. You're going to know about demons. You're going to know about unclean spirits, familiar spirits. You're going to know about mental illness. Why? Because you should be casting those things out. Sorry. A person comes in this door with ADHD, you don't tell him, well, you better go to your doctor and get a prescription. <laughs> no, you grab him by the frontal lobe of his head and you command that lying spirit to come out of him right now in the mighty name of Yashada. You take control over that double soul that's in his body and you cancel the assignment of Satan. <laughs> all right, brothers. Y'all brothers can be seated. It's all good. All right. You're going to learn about the spirit world today. We're going to go in debt. We're going to learn about unclean spirits, where they come from, how they manifest. We're going to learn about familiar spirits. Those are probably the most strongest demons that you'll ever encounter in a deliverance ministry. Familiar spirits. They are powerful. We're going to talk about, un did I say unclean? We're going to talk about unclean spirits. Okay? Mental illness. If you had not had head trauma and they diagnosed you with bipolar and you had nothing going on with your head, that's a demon. That's a spirit. That needs to be cast out. You don't need medication. That's only going to bound you up. It's called the circle effect. You start feeling good, then the demon comes in with some kind of angry thought. Then you snap off. You go from smiling one minute to snapping off the next. That's a demon. Bipolar. Then you take your medicine. Boop. The demon backs off. Because now you're putting toxins in your body. It's a double whammy effect. So then, after the medicine has worn off, you start to feel good about yourself. Start snapping, then, you, then the demon comes with another one. Snap off, you take your pill, it's a circle effect. But the Most High don't deal with circle effects. No. He don't deal with circle effects. He stops the circle effect. That's right. If you're dealing with bipolar, you're going to stop the circle effect tonight. Amen? Yes. Yes. Glory to the Most High. I heard like one amen and I heard a glory. Y'all don't have to be... Maybe they don't believe you, Pastor. They don't believe me? I don't think they believe you. Okay, we're going to have to show proof then. That's right. We're going to have to show proof then. See, that's something Father likes. He likes a mind who has a little question about it. I don't know about this healing and deliverance stuff. Until we take you in that back room. <laughs> Amen. So we have a detailed study. All right. We're going to get started with Enoch chapter 15. Enoch chapter 15, verses 8 through 12. 
And now the giants who are preceded from the spirits of flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth. Shall be called evil spirits upon the earth. Demons. Okay? Read. And on the earth shall there shall there be their dwelling. The earth. The earth is their dwelling. Evil spirits, the earth is their dwelling. Okay? Read. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies. Evil spirits proceed from their bodies. These are the, the, the giants that fell. Evil spirits proceeded from their body. Go ahead. Because they are born from men and from the holy watchers mm -hmm. is their beginning and primal origin. Mm -hmm. They shall be evil spirits on earth. They shall be evil spirits on earth. So that debunks that whole thing about Christianity. There's no demons. Yeah. We just bumped that whole false doctrine about there's no demons. Read. And evil spirits shall they be called. Right. As for the spirits of heaven, <coughs> in heaven shall be their dwelling. Mm -hmm. But as the spirits of the earth which are born un upon the earth, on the earth shall there shall be their dwelling. Correct. And the spirits <coughs> I want you to listen to verse eleven. And the spirits of the giants afflict. Afflict. What afflict? Demons. Go ahead. Oppress. Oppress. Demons oppress people. Go ahead. Destroy. Destroy. They want to destroy your life. Go ahead. Attack. Demons don't just sit back. They attack. Mm -hmm. They're not like Christians. I'll just pray it out. No, they attack. Read. Do battle. They do battle. This whole thing is a fight. Blessed be the peacemakers. How do you make peace? By making war. That's right. Read. And work destruction. Work destruction in your life. Go ahead. On the earth and cause trouble. On the earth they cause trouble. Yeah. How many of you know that a de know when a demon don't cause trouble? Mm -hmm. And nobody raising their hand. That's right. They cause trouble. Everything in your life that's problematic, you better believe that there's a demon associated with it. Breathe. They take no food. No food. They don't have to eat chicken. I like chicken. I like to eat from some fried chicken. But demons don't have to take fried chicken. Their food is your sin. Read. But nevertheless, hunger and thirst. They hunger and thirst. Go ahead. And cause offenses. Cause offenses. They cause offenses. Go ahead. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against women because they have proceeded from them that's right we're going to talk about seven types of spirits today we're going to talk about rejection these are the top ones that we face in the deliverance ministry day in day out rejection abandonment rebellion mental illness familiar spirits unclean spirits and i just thought i'd toss in jezebel and ahab <laughs> because there's a lot of false teachings about Jezebel and Ahab that we're going to get out in the open. Jezebel for the ladies, Ahab for the men. If you have a Jezebel spirit in your house, chances are you have an Ahab spirit also. Mm -hmm. How do I know? Because I'm looking at a, a one who had a Jezebel spirit, and I, I'm, I'm one who had an Ahab spirit. All right, now. I'm transparent. I'm transparent. I don't have to put on a facade. I've never had dudes before in my life. <laughs> That's not me. In order to have deliverance, you must be born again. You cannot go through deliverance and not be born again. That's dangerous. Very dangerous. Because you're not under the protection if you're not born again. Once those evil spirits leave and you go back into your sin, they're going to come back seven times worse. You think you had a little sniffle, then all of a sudden you got full-blown whatever. Okay. Second, you have to walk, right? You must repent. You must forgive. Yes, sir. If you're holding grudges against anybody, and you, you must forgive. Anyone who cannot forgive, you will not be set free. It's a guarantee. You will not be set free. And you must want deliverance from demons. You have to want to be set free. You have to want to be set free. You must want to be set free. 
First John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins mm -hmm. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Sin is unrighteousness. Yes. So you forgive, you uh, confess your sins. Then he's faithful and righteous that he's going to forgive you of your sins. Then he cleanses you from all righteousness. Unforgiveness causes cancer. Cancer is a demon, by the way. Cancer is not sickness. It's not. It's a demon. It attacks the body. It is a destroyer. How do you get rid of cancer? Number one thing is you get you forgive. Unforgiveness is the number one root why people go through cancer and also a little self hatred in there. But you have to forgive people. Then you have to change the way you eat. All those pork sandwiches and all that other shrimp, lobster tails, you have to change the way you eat. Go to deliverance, change the way you eat. I guarantee you that that cancer will go into remission and die without one single dose of chemotherapy. Yes, How do I know? Because I've seen several people heal yep. from cancer. One lady in particular, stage four cancer, yes. on her deathbed, yes. totally healed. Yes. So don't tell me that the Most High can't do that. He can do all things. Yes, he can. Am I talking right tonight? I don't think I'm talking right tonight. Yes. You have to forgive everybody. Do I have to forgive my uncle who came in my bedroom when I was six years old and molested me? Yes. You must forgive him. Do I have to forgive my mom when she slapped me with a cactus in the face? Yes. You must forgive. You must forgive all people. You can't hold grudges against anybody. That'll, that's a sure stopper for your deliverance. Okay? You have to forgive. Matthew chapter 6 verse 14. Let's get that. For ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive. Read that again. For for ye forgive men their trespasses. Forgive men their trespasses. What father's going to do? Your heavenly father will also forgive you. Must do. Your father will also do. Yes. Forgive them. Matthew 6, 14. Churches don't do the Great Commission no more. Churches don't do the Great, great Commission no more. Am I speaking proper English? Yes. They don't do it. What is the Great Commission? Let's get Mark 16. 16 and 20. Like I said, this is an in-depth. We're going to go in-depth. I'm going to get to the demons in a moment. Mark chapter 16, verse 16 through 20. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites mm -hmm. of, the, of sad countenance, for they disfigure their face. Mm -hmm. that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men. Verse 16. <coughs> yeah, that's Mark 16. It's also Matthew 28, 18 and following. Great commission. Mm -hmm. It's Mark chapter 16, verse 16 through 20. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Baptized shall be saved. Uh huh. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Mm -hmm. And these signs shall follow them that believe. That believe, go ahead. In my name <laughs> shall they cast out devils. Cast out devils. That's right. Go ahead. They shall speak with new tongues. Speak with new tongues, uh-huh. They shall take up serpents. Uh-huh. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That's right. Now, we're not talking about those preachers in Louisiana. <laughs> those crazy preachers in Louisiana who take these rattlesnakes and start running through the congregation, yelling and acting crazy while the snakes is just 
biting up, and like, praise Jesus, while they're being riddled with rattlesnakes up their arms. We're not talking about that. That's not what the, <laughs> that's not what Yeshua was talking about when he said take up snakes. That's not what he was talking about. That's crazy stuff. Go ahead. And it shall not hurt them. Mm -hmm. They shall lay hands on the sick and That's they right. shall recover. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Right. We should be laying hands on... A brother comes in here with the flu. We should be laying hands on that brother. Canceling the assignment of Satan on his body and driving that flu virus out. A cop, somebody comes up here and they have a crippled hand we should grab that hand and say in the mighty name of Yeshua, you're healed that's what we should be doing go ahead so then after the Most High has spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of Ahiah and they went forth and preached everywhere the Most High is working with them and conforming them that the word with signs followed. Amen. You have to be able to, you have to do the Great Commission. You have to watch out for these pastors who don't teach the Great Commission. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. I got it. Uh, but a natural man does not receive the things of the Most High, the Spirit of the Most High. They are foolish unto him. See, pastors are natural men. They worry about their tide and buckets. They're worried, worried about their BMW being scratched in the parking lot. <laughs> they're, con they're, they're concerned about the numbers. I once went to a church and they had a board up on how much tithe they took and how many people came to church Sunday morning. It's a business. <laughs> that's right. It's a business. And that's a shame. That's a shame. The Bible gives us a warning for people who don't preach the Great Commission. Okay, He gives us a warning. That's 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. For if, he, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus... Whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit mm -hmm. which ye have not received, or any gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with them, with him. Mm -hmm. Preaching another Yeshua, preaching another gospel. No. See, when we're here, we preach the truth. One hundred percent. Every scripture that we go through, look them up yourself. Find out yourself. Do not take my word for it. How do demons get in? Demons get in through all types of sin. Adultery. Prostitution. You can't be a, you can't be a prostitute and not have demons. That, that can't happen. Okay? Drugs. Alcohol. Chronic violence. Violence all in your home. That's demons. Those are demons. Abuse from family members, whether physical or verbal. That's how demons get in. This is when you're younger. Rape. Trauma. You're in a car accident. Oh, ah! That's a fear spirit that just got in. Trauma. You're seven years old and you're walking through Walmart and all of a sudden you get separated from mommy. You start to panic. That's how they get in. Accidents, pedophilia, lesbianism, all types of sin causes demons to come into your body. Dysfunctional families, your family sin, generational curses. Every single one of us know about generational curses throughout our family. You had an alcoholic uncle, an alcoholic grandmother, grandfather, an alcoholic great-grandmother, great-grandfather, Alcoholism running down the family line. Every gener every generation, there's somebody there with some type of alcoholism problem. Every generation, there's a drug problem. There's one person at least. That's generational sin. Sexual abuse. No, no doubt you would have demons with that. 
physical abuse. If you're constantly moving year after year after year, that's a dysfunctional family. And the children from moving from year to year to year causes demons to come in. No ground roots whatsoever. Of course, porn. That's obvious. Yelling. My mother used to yell at me all the time. You're never going to be anything. You're never going to amount to anything. And that's the good way. That's the good way. That's the PG version. <laughs> Yelling. Incest. Divorce. Poverty. If you have multiple step parents, that cause, that's a dysfunction. All this is cause of dysfunctional families. All of it. How do people get infected? Through childhood. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, they come in through childhood. And sometimes they just lay dormant. They lay dormant and they wait until you become of a certain age. Then all of a sudden, you're wondering why your 13-year-old is not your cute, darling 12-year-old. Your 12-year-old your has manifested into this pot-smoking, sexual-driven person, alcoholic person. In a matter of days, it seems like. And you wonder why. And you take your poor child to the psychologist. There's something wrong with little Johnny. 12 years old, he was happy as can be. 13, he's wearing goth clothes. Wearing goth makeup. Cutting himself. There was a spirit that lay dormant. And when that spirit saw that little Johnny was of age and ripe for the picking, he burst it open. Okay? So we're going to talk about the, uh, the seducing spirits, the unclean spirits. Seducing spirits, they cause mental illness, while unclean spirits cause physical illness. Mm -hmm. Familiar spirits, those are the strongest ones. Those are your church demons. Mm -hmm. Kundalini spirits, you've probably heard us when we pray for a few of you, we're calling out Kundalini. Mm -hmm. Those are church demons. Those are strong ones. Familiar spirits, they move things around. You ever go leave your house and you come back and there's stuff moved around and you're wondering, well, how did that happen? There's, there's familiar spirits in your house. Go through your house. Find out what sin is in your house, i.e. music. Can they leave handprints? Like we saw a handprint that was on the mirror that was all yes. crippled looking mm -hmm. with nails. Yes, mm -hmm. yes they can. Go to your house. If they, if it was on a mirror, was it on your medicine cabinet? No, it was just in the bathroom mirror of the master bathroom. Okay, go through your house. Check your camp. There's something in your camp that's not of the most high. Mm -hmm. Get rid of it. Trash it. Okay? Why is deliverance needed? Why do we need deliverance? First of all, no Christian can be possessed by demons. Right? Let's get Mark. <laughs> I better rephrase that one, right? Let's get Matthew chapter 9, verse 32 and 33. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with the devil. Mm -hmm. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb speak. And the multitudes marveled, saying, it was never so seen in Israel. So what happened there? There was a man who was brought. The Bible says that he was possessed with a demon. That possessed is a different word. Okay? That word is not possessed. And I just forgot what that word is. <laughs> it's not possessed. He was not. It, they translated the word, the word incorrectly. Okay? But he wasn't possessed. We can't be possessed with devils. Why? Because when you become born again, the Holy Spirit resides here. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit resides here. So you can't become possessed with the devil. Your body has two, three parts. Your mind, soul, and spirit. The Holy Spirit resides in your spirit. 
Your soul is where all the sin is, the lust, the anger, the violence. That's part of one of your it's one of the charts in the pamphlet that we provided for you. Okay? So and you have your mind. The demons go after your mind with fiery darts. That's what Paul was talking about. They come with fiery darts. And they come with lies. Once you accept the lie and do the sin, then the demon has you. But if you rebuke the lie, you're walking through Walmart and all of a sudden something tells you, a spirit comes and says, you know what, get a Uzi and shoot everybody. You stop and say, wait a minute. I'm not about to shoot everybody. You stop the lie right then and there. You don't go out and start blazing up the place. Okay? You will be healed when, de when demons leave your body. All of a sudden, your body heals itself. Let's get Acts chapter 8, verse 7. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, come out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsy, and that were lame, were healed. So the unclean spirits, which cause physical trauma to the body, when they come out, all of a sudden you're healed. Now, is de do demons cause everything? No. Don't go. You, you don't want to go around and start casting demons every single time somebody does something. I stubbed my toe. Oh, you got that's a demon in there. Come on out. No, you don't. You don't go casting out demons on everything. Okay. Some ministries they get kind of wound up with that. <laughs> they get kind of wound up with that. You got a hand now? Well, there's a spirit in your hand. We got to cast that demon out right now and then mighty demon of your shire. No. No. Let's not be let's not be let's not be crazy there for a second. Yes, sir. Uh, I can remember this picture, but uh, there was uh, someone who was uh, deaf or something. And the Lord said, or Christ said, he, his parents didn't sin. This condition was for this moment, so he could heal them. And I can't remember the scripture. So God could be praised. You were saying that there was a young man who was deaf. Or someone who was deaf. Uh huh. They brought him before the Pharisees or sorry, before his disciples, and he couldn't. They couldn't Could heal him. Right. And then he had to use the prayer. Mm -hmm. When Yeshaya said that um, this type of demon comes out by prayer and fasting, yeah. what that means is that you have to build yourself up. You just can't go out and start doing deliverance and healing on people. You just can't say one morning, you know what, I feel like casting out devils. <laughs> you can't do that. That's what Yeshaya meant. This demon only comes out by praying and fasting. What he's meaning is, this demon only comes out when you're prepared. Not everybody can go out and start casting out devils. Start casting out demons. Not everybody can. And in fact, I didn't want to do it. When my wife said, I got a vision of casting out demons. I said, oh no you don't. No you don't. I don't mind teaching every other Sunday morning and Sunday service. I'm not finna cast out no demons, and besides, wife, we can't have demons. We done been born again. We can't have demons. But I guess the Holy Spirit called me a liar again. <laughs> Let's get 2 Ezra, chapter 7, verse 27. And whosoever is delivered from the four said evil shall see my wonders. Shall see your wonders. How many of you were delivered from something and you saw the wonder of the Most High after you were delivered? Come on now. Everybody in here should be lifting up their hands. How many of you have been through deliverance and saw the wonder of the Most High? Saw something move in your life? Well, actually, everybody, everybody should have been up. Yes! Thank you, Yeshua! 
How do you cancel? How do you get them things out? You gotta command those things to come out. Temper, come out. Lust, come out. Religion, come out. False gifts, come out. Lies, come out. Anger, come out. Deceit, come out. Violence, come out. Spirit of murder, come out. You have to cancel, you have to tell them things to come out. Ladies, if you've had an abortion, you have the spirit of death on your womb. That has to come out. That has to come out. If you went with somebody to have an abortion, you got the spirit of death on you just because you were in association with that person. Yeah. You have to have the spirit of death come out of you mm -hmm. in order to continue to move forward in Christ. Mm -hmm. You must have that removed from you. Now, self-deliverance. A couple of you came to me and said, this self-deliverance thing, it's working. That's because it's in the Bible. <laughs> I didn't just, I'm not a genius. I didn't make this up. I didn't say, you know what? People should be casting demons out on their own. Evil spirits and sickness, they should be casting out on their own. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. I, I didn't make up this doctrine of casting, of self-deliverance. It's right there in the Bible. Okay, that's where I get it from. Having, therefore, these promises. Promises. Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. Wait, wait. Read that again, because I don't think everybody heard you. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. He ain't talking about after you've been mud wrestling to go take a shower. <laughs> that ain't what he's talking about. Read that again. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. From what? Of the flesh. Of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the spirit. Mm-hmm. Perfecting holiness in the fear of the Most High. Perfecting holiness in the fear of the Most High. I become fearful because I know that the Most High, that the Most High, the Holy is present when we're in during deliverance. It's not a fear of, oh my God. It's a fear of respect. Yes. Reverence. Reverence. It's not me thinking about, okay, this sister has this and this. Mm -hmm. That's not me. That's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, we have to cast out devils. Okay? Mark chapter 16, verse 17 says that all miraculous signs follow those believing, and they will cast out demons in my name. They will cast out demons in my name. But what did Yeshua say in Matthew chapter 12, verse 28? This is what will happen if you cast out demons in his name. Go ahead. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of Ahia, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. It's come unto you. When we are, when you're going through deliverance, and the person who's praying you through deliverance, you're going through, the Spirit of the Most High comes upon both people. Not just the person who's doing the praying, but the person who's receiving the prayer. The Spirit of the Most High comes on both. That's why I say during deliverance, if somebody is doing it the proper way, both people are going, you're going to feel the power of the Most High. You're going to feel the Most High just come over you. A lot of times with deliverance, you feel heat all through your body. That's the Most High. That's the Holy Spirit. If you feel coldness, then we have to stop and we have to talk. Coldness is of Satan. But you start going through deliverance, and all of a sudden you start feeling heat. You can stand out here. Last week, when it was 50 inches of snow, and you can be going through deliverance and feel the most high, feel the heat of the most high, and I guarantee you that the snow around you will start to melt. That's how hot the most high will get in your body, cleansing out all those infirmities. Right? Mm -hmm. Let's go to verse 29. Or else, how can one enter in, into a strong man's house? and spoil his goods, 
except he first bind the strong man. Mm -hmm. And then he will spoil his house. You got to bind the strong man. That's right. We go after the stronghold every single time. The strong man or the stronghold. You have to go after that. Because I'm going to tell you something. Lust, that's not a stronghold. That's, that's a little one. Anger, that's a little one. We want the rejection demon. That's right. That's the strong one. We want the rebellion. We want the abandonment. We want those. You get the strong man, you bind them up. When I go street preaching, and we're on 19th and Camelback, there's the train station that goes there. Every single time we go street preaching, you better believe that there's a demon coming off that train. Every single time. And that demon, no matter what I'm saying, it's over there. What did you say? And they start manifesting. So what do I do? Before that demon even comes across the street, I'm binding that demon right now. I bind you, Satan, right now in the mighty name of Yeshua. You will not come over here and cause mischief and destruction. You will not come over here with your filthiness. You will not come over here and disrupt what the Most High is doing. I bind you right now, Satan, in the mighty name of Yeshua. You know what happened? Hey, brother, you was talking about something. You know, it goes from you blank, blank, blank. I'll kick your blank, blank, blank. It changes, and it, you know what, brother? You were saying something just a minute ago. Glory. Not my doing. It's the Most High's doing. You bind up the spirit. Every single demon that you come across, you bind that thing up. And you tell that demon to get out in the mighty name of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. So I saying that you can't send demons to hell. Yes, I've seen plenty of you. I've cast counts. I've done deliverance, bound up demons, and told them go straight to hell. You know what the demons do? Ah! They let out a yell that is unbelievable. But we willingly go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> we willingly go to hell. Demons sit up there and they'll say, I don't want to go to hell. You tell that thing, go to hell. Now in the name of Yeshua. They start screaming like a wild banshee. <laughs> ah! But we willfully go to hell. I don't understand that. I know. <laughs> we willfully go to hell. Demons are like, I ain't going to no hell. No. <laughs> But we continue to do our lies, our deceit, our vulgarness. We continue to live and operate not in the spirit of the Most High. Not following the law, statutes, and commandments that he has placed. That's what happened. We have to preach deliverance and healing. Everybody should know this scripture, right? Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Everybody should know this scripture. If not, we'll stop the service right now and we'll take you in that prayer room. I'm just kidding. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. You gotta preach it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me mm -hmm. because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Preach the gospel to the poor. That's the afflicted soul ones. Uh-huh. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. Heal the broken hearted. If, you're, if you need healing, you've been in a bad relationship, and you need healing, most I can heal your heart. Heal your heart from when your father told you you're not going to never amount to anything. And he walked out, of, uh, walked out of your life when you were six. That's a soul wound. That has to be healed. Also, there has to be deliverance going on. Because there's a spirit in there that will cause you to do the same thing to your child. Mm -hmm. You going through deliverance is stopping everything that's generational in your family. Mm -hmm. So that when your children come along, your children aren't demon filled and demon just filled up with demons all over the place. So your deliverance is not just for you. It's for your children as well. And their children. And their children. Who wants to stop the generational curse of alcoholism in their family? That's right. Who wants to stop the generational yes, curse of yes, abuse in their yes, family? Yes. Who wants to stop the generational curse of drugs yes. in their family? Yes. Who wants to stop the generational curse of yes. poverty? Yes. Poverty is a spirit yes. over the family. Yes. 
Yes, it is. Who wants to stop that? I do. <laughs> Glory be to the Most High. Go ahead. To preach deliverance to the captives. Wait a minute. Church, do, do churches do this? Read that again. To, to preach deliverance to the captives. This ain't my words. This is Josiah's words. If you have a problem with deliverance to the captives, take it up with him. Go ahead. And recover the sight to the blind. I'm still waiting for that blind man. <laughs> I'm still waiting for that blind man to come in with his cane, looking like Stevie Wonder, and we just grab his, get a mud pack, just like Josiah did, spit at it, Rub it on eyes. <laughs> Tell them to go wash it off in a pool or something. If we got to, whatever. Wash it off and he be healed. And he can see. <laughs> Sometimes you got to get a little, you know, you got to get a little gross with deliverance. There was a young lady who I had to pray for. She was having problems in her ears. The most I had me to spit on my fingers and drive my fingers through her ears so she can be healed. So tonight, if you have ear problems, I will be spitting on my hands and putting them in your ear so you can be healed in the mighty name of Yeshua. Can I get an amen? Glory. Oh, oh, wonderful. <laughs> Go ahead. To say liberty, them that are bruised. Set of liberty for those that are being cru bruised. Then, in verse Luke chapter 10, verse 17, we have to cast them out. Luke 10, 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the, deliver even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. That's right. When you call, when you're doing deliverance, and you're praying somebody through deliverance, and you're calling out, the demon of poverty in the name of the Shia, those demons are subject to that name. Will they resist? Yes, they will resist. But you call out in the name of Yeshaya, right? Now Yeshaya gives us authority. Let's go to 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power what was that again? I give you, I give unto you power. He gives unto who power? He gives unto who power? Us. He gives unto who power? Us. Who has the power to, to, to cast out devils in Yeshua's name? We, we do. Right. Who has, the, who has the power to cast out devils in Yeshua's name? Stephanie does. That's right. Oh, they're getting smart. Who has the, devil, who has the power to cast out devils? You do. That's right. You got the power to cast out devils? You have the power to cast out devils? What about you right here? You got the power to cast out devils? Good, because I'm going to need deliverance after this, so I expect all of you to pray for me and cast stuff out of me. Right? All of us has the power. He didn't say Elder Rosen has the power. He didn't say Sister Melka has the power. He wasn't specific. He said we all have the power. Read that part again, because I don't think somebody heard it. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Tread on serpents and scorpions. That don't mean put, get your bare feet and start looking for scorpions to stomp on, because Yeshua said that you tread on ser ser serpents and scorpions. That don't mean that. You'll get stung. <laughs> then you're going to wish somebody can pray not only ignorance out of you, but healing out of you. Right? Read. And over all the powers of the enemy. Over all powers of who? The enemy. You have power over the devil. You have power over the devil. That's right. Every single one of you have power over the devil. So why are you listening to his lies? That's right. Why are you listening to his lies? You're fat. Well, so what? More than me to love. <laughs> huh? Huh? You got a big nose. Well, that's because I'm a culinary genius. <laughs> See, you have to combat the devil whenever he comes to you with negativity. You have to combat that. 
you're ignorant. No, I may not know what two plus two is, but I know where you're going. That's right. <laughs> Combat the devil with whatever it is that he throws your way. And I guarantee you, he will flee. Because the devil don't like to fight. That's why he sends demons, imps, enforcers, slender man. That's why he sends those. We've never had to cast out the Satan himself. We always have to cast out the spirit of Lucifer. Yeah. We never had to cast out Satan himself. We always have to cast out the spirit of lust or anger or violence. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the devil is sitting back. He's lazy. He don't want to fight you. All he wants to do is say, you're fat. And then all of a sudden you go to the weight loss doctor. <laughs> That's what he wants for you to get cut on. Mm -hmm. Understand the setup? Deliverance. Do deliverance and the Holy Spirit comes. Right? We've all experienced that. When we do deliverance, the Holy Spirit comes. Let's get John 16, 13. Albeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but who, whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. So it's not Elder Rosen casting out demons. It's the Holy Spirit. I have no power. In fact, if a demon was standing right here right now, he'd probably kick my face in. I have no power, but I know that the Holy Spirit is not going to allow a demon to stand here and kick me in the face. I know that. So I got back up. That's right. <laughs> there was a whole clip of, yeah, I was worldly, of the Jerry Springer show. And in this old clip, there was a midget. And he said, I need back up. Where's Steve? Y'all know who Steve was. Don't make it seem like I'm the only one who watched the Jerry Springer show. <laughs> Don't make it seem like that. Some of y'all still watching it right now through syndication. <laughs> but there's a little midget on there. And he's like, I need backup. He was cheating on somebody. I need backup. Where's Steve? Steve's the big ball guy. We got backup. Yes, we do. The Holy Spirit. Yes. The Shire Christ. And the Most High. With that back up, I can fight any demon. But what you can't do is you can't go out before it's time. That's right. Get Acts 19. You can't go out before it's time. You can't. You're getting prepared, ready, you know, building yourself up. When I first started going through deliverance, it was a Friday night. I couldn't go Saturday night and start casting demons out of people. Why? Because of this, read. Then certain certain of the vagabond Jew, Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits. The name of the most high shine. So, so they were calling out evil spirits. These these certain Jews were casting out, trying to cast out spirits. They were doing exorcisms, trying to cast out spirits in the name of Yeshua. Three. Saying, we adjourn you by Isaiah, who Paul preaches. Mm -hmm. And there were seven sons of the of one Sivan, a, a Jew, a chief of the priests, which did so. They were doing demons. They were casting them out. Go they were trying to go ahead. And the evil spirit answered and said, Isaiah, I know, and Paul, I know. But who are you? Yeshia, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Who are you, Earl? How are you going to start casting out demons before time? And then what happened to him? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. So demons are strong. 
When you're going through deliverance, you when you're praying somebody through deliverance, there's a power. There's a strength there. There's a video on YouTube where a young woman was just filled with demons, ran off into the expressway, got hit by a semi, got up, and kept running. Yeah. Now we're going to have a semi truck come over here later, <laughs> and we're going to see who's really filled with demons, and you're going to run into that truck. <laughs> but that's how strong they are. And if you go out and start doing things before time, I guarantee you, you're going to get Hurt. Yes, Big time hurt. Because you have no clue on how to bind a spirit or how to do this or how to do that. Demons talk. They manifest. They talk through people. What are you going to do when a demon comes to you and says, you know what? I'm going to kill you. We know who you are. And then they grab you by the neck. We want you back. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Start screaming? Ah! <laughs> or do you tell that demon, you better get your hands off of me. I'm the anointed. I bind you right now, you filthy spirit. Okay. See, these men didn't, they didn't, they weren't ready. And they started casting out demons. They were doing it properly in Yeshua's name, but they weren't ready. Mm -hmm. Ladies, how many of you break bread? Do you take the bread out when it's still pink? Do you take the bread out when it's still like white color? The bread's not ready. If you eat it, you'll get what? Sick. Same thing. You're in the oven. Let the Most High do what He does with you. Let Him continue to put you through that oven to strengthen you, build you up. So then when it's time to do the glorious work of the Most High. You are able to do it and not be afraid and not get trampled and not get stomped on because demons know who you are. You're in the truth. They know who you are. Every single one of your names is on their list because you know the truth. Every single one of your names is on their list. Along with the government list and other lists. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so how do you do deliverance? You have to find out what sin is inside of you first in order to be delivered. Let's get Lamentations chapter 2 verse 14. You have to find out what sin is inside of you. If you don't, if you don't have a problem with alcohol, then if you don't have a problem drinking, then you don't cast out the spirit of alcoholism. If you smoke chronically, then you cast that spirit out. The spirit of chronic smoking or some type of fear. But that's what you would cast out. You wouldn't cast out a fear of overeating on a person who's an anorexic. Right. You just don't do that. Discernment is number one in deliverance ministry. And a lot of times people will tell you, yeah, I got, um, yeah, I got this thing about pink elephants. <laughs> so you start casting out the demon of pink elephants, mm -hmm. not understanding that that demon is trying to throw you off. He's lying to you. Yeah. There is no demon of pink elephants. <laughs> so you continue to investigate. Because, see, demons don't want to leave your glorious temples. Read that, Lamentations chapter 2, verse 14. Got to find out what's inside of you. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. Mm -hmm. They have not discovered thy iniquity. Have not discovered your iniquity. Go ahead. To turn away thy captivity, but have seen for thee false burdens and cause of abandonment. Abonishment. Abonishment. Mm -hmm. So you have to find out what sin is inside of you. You have to, the, your iniquity has to be revealed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just have to lay it out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I cheated. You have to lay it out there. You want to be set free. 
It's not about what happened in your past. It's about what right now. You have to be set free. You have to be open. You have to be open-minded. You have to be like, you don't care what it takes to get your deliverance. You want your deliverance. Okay, that's how it has to be. You have to be like those pit bulls and you throw a steak and they haven't eaten in three days. That's, right. that's the attitude that you have to have. Let's get Lamentations chapter 8 verse 4. Sin also, has anybody ever seen a person who's 20 and they look like they're 40? Yeah. <laughs> Sin makes you look bad. Yes, it does. It ages you. Go ahead and read that. Their visage is blacker than coal. They are not known in, in the streets. So sin makes you look so bad that you're not even known to people who know you. Darker than soot. Your face is just, it, it's, it's incredible. It's like you've been, through a, been in a suntan. Sin makes your a complexion dark. Read. Their skin cleaveth to their bones. Have you ever seen a crackhead? If you've never seen a crack, a person who's on crack, their skin, their, their skin just shrivels. Yes, it does. Look like somebody took a, a vacuum cleaner and just yeah. turned it on reversing. That's how bad. That's what sin does. Read. It is weather. Okay. It's weather. Go ahead. It has become like a stick. It becomes like a stick. We're going to move on. When you go through deliverance, the demons are going to resist. We're going to get Mark chapter 1. She got pain? Who is that? The little girl? The little? Yeah, lady right there. She's getting serious pain. Right here with the sweater? This one. This one. Yeah. Yeah. What's you can that? take care of that in a minute. You want to take care of that? Yeah. Okay. My wife is going to go crazy. Take care of that. See, if it was a normal church service, there you go. if it was a normal Christian church, I would have been upset. <laughs> How dare she interrupt my, my teaching? <laughs> I would have been upset. I would have been angry. But see, this ain't your normal church. This ain't your church. Somebody feeling something? Okay, we got to get that thing out. We got to get that thing out. We can't sit around here and let demons manifest in people. And once I'm done with my great dissertation, then we'll continue. Once I'm done with my great dissertation, then maybe I'll see to you. But I got to shake the hands of everybody before they leave. Oh my gosh, right? <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> How many demons do you think they're getting from doing all the handshaking with everybody? <laughs> oh, loads. Demons are going to resist you. They even resist Yeshaya. Right? Let's go to Mark chapter 1, verse 25 and 26. Go ahead. And Yeshaya rebuked him. Saying. Saying. See, that's the key. Saying. He didn't, it doesn't say said. It said saying, meaning that he said it more than once. Okay, go ahead. Hold thy peace and come out of him. Shut up! That's what he said. The Bible's just being nice. Yoshai said, shut up and come out of him. Shut up and come out of him right now. Go ahead. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, and he cried with a loud voice. See, demons don't play nice. You tell them to come out, they just don't say, okay. You start convulsing, <laughs> shaking. They start tearing at your body on the inside. They start clawing at you. Why? Because right now the Holy Spirit is like a tornado. And that demon is clawing on for dear life. Because you called the name of Yeshia for him to come out in Yeshia's name. 
So that demon just ain't going to come out because you say come out in your shyest name. That demon is clawing. When you go through deliverance and you feel stuff and it feels like a cat is just ripping you up, yep. those are demons. And they are literally clawing down on your organs not to come out. Read. And he came out of him. He came out of him. This one was a fierce spirit. Fierce spirits always come out with a loud cry. Almost always, I want to say. How do demons come out? Let's get Psalms 104, verse 29. See, the Bible has all kinds of stuff on deliverance. It has a plethora. That's right. I'm educated. It has a lot of scriptures that talks about deliverance and healing. This one I like in particular because it talks about deliverance and what we say. See, I didn't make it up by saying demons come out through the breath. I didn't make that up. Because I felt the demon come out and I said, <gasps> and it came out. No. We went to scripture. Go ahead. Thou hidest thy face. They are troubled. Mm -hmm. Thou takest away their breath. Mm -hmm. They die and mm -hmm. return to their dust. That's how demons come out, through the breath. Okay? That's how demons come out through the breath. You hide your face and they are troubled. The demons are troubled. Why? Because you're in prayer. And you, and you gather their breath. <laughs> Breathing. We say all the time, demons comes out through the lungs. They expire and return to dust. But the demons are going to fight against you. Let's get Lamentations chapter 3. The demons are going to fight against you. They're not just going to go peacefully. They're going to fight against you. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 18. I'm sorry, Lamentations chapter 3 verse 8. Also, when I cry and shout, he shouted out my prayer. He shuts out my prayer. So when you're going through deliverance, the demons all automatically, you got a grocery list. You're, you're getting that thing out. And all of a sudden, here comes a thought. Your shoes untied. Or, what are you going to eat after service? <laughs> Throw stuff at you to stop you from going through deliverance. Read. He that he has enclosed my ways with huge stones. He encloses your ways. He stops. He stops you. The demons stop you. Go ahead. He has made my path crooked. He's made your path crooked. That's not the most high who makes your path crooked. Those are demons. They make you walk a crooked path. Go ahead. He was unto me as a bear lying in wait. That's what a demon does. They lie unto you. They're waiting for you. They're waiting for you for that opportune moment for when somebody cuts you off on I-10 for you to get angry and say, you know what, I'm going to get that. What? They're waiting. They're waiting for you as a child, you're innocent, to become of age, so that way that bear can pounce on you. Read. And as a lion in secret places. As a lion in secret places. That's what they do. Read. He has turned aside my ways and pulled me in pieces. That's what they do. They turn you away from the most, their job is to keep you away from the most high. Keep you away from spiritual places true spiritual places that's their job to turn you away so that you can follow the path of destruction read he has made me desolate they, that's, what do they do? desolate they keep you isolated that's how demons work they keep you isolated so they can work on you depression is very very Demonic. It's very demonic. And what that demon does is isolates you. Keeps you bound up. Keeps you sleeping in the midday. That's what depression does. It keeps you isolated so you can hear the man of God speaking to you. 
That's what it does. Go ahead. He has been his bow and set me a, as a mark for thy arrows. He has caused the arrow of his quiver to enter into my reign. Mm -hmm. Deliverance, you also have to know that you can't refuse deliverance. You can't refuse deliverance. I got it. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23 to 33. Turn back my warning. Behold, I pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I called and you refused. You refuse deliverance. You refuse when the Most High is calling and saying, you know what? Brother, Brother John, you have a problem with alcoholism. I'm calling you. I want you to be set free. But you say, nah, there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with me. Then the Most High Bible says, I stretch out my hand. And no one pays attention. The Most High brings his hand out. And yet and still, we'll say, I'm good. I'm good. Don't worry about me, brother. Why you got sciatica in your back. Don't worry about me, brother. I'm good. Verse 25 says, But you have ignored my counsel. And you did not desire my warning. See, before you come to deliverance, chances are you have been warned several times. There's been a, a mediator come to you several times and said, this is an issue. You need to deal with it. This is an issue. You need to deal with it. But you ignored it. So verse 26 says, I will also laugh in your calamity. I will mock, I will mock when your dread comes. This is the Most High speaking. The Most High is saying, I will mock your calamity. That's not nice. But you refuse deliverance. Verse 27, when your dread comes in like a storm and your calamity arrives like a tempest, when distress, anguish come on to you, then they shall call on me and I will not answer. I will not answer. Because you refuse deliverance. You refuse to be set free. Instead, they hated knowledge. And chose not to fear the Most High. They did not desire my counsel. They despised all my reproof. And they shall eat of the fruit of their own ways. And be filled with their own devices. Filled with your own sin and iniquity. For going astray of the ones of simplicity kills them. And the ease of fools destroy them. But he who listens to me lives securely and shall be at ease in the dread of evil. That's the most I talk. <coughs> after deliverance, what happens to you after deliverance? Let's get Psalms, um, let's get Song of Solomon chapter 7. I know I'm jumping around, but I just want to hit key points. Song of Solomon chapter 7 verses 10 through 13. I am my beloved, and his desire is toward me. Come, my beloved, let us go forth into the field. Mm -hmm. Let us lodge in the villages. Who doesn't want to lodge in a village with the Most High? Read. Let us go. Let us get. Let us let us get up early to the vineyard. Let us see if the vines flourish. Who doesn't want to watch the vines flourish with the Most High? The blossoms flourish with the Most High. This is after deliverance. Read. Whether the tender grapes appear and the pomegranate bud forth, mm -hmm. there will I give thee love. Give my. There will I give thee my love. Mm -hmm. My mandrakes shall give a smell, and at our gates are a matter of pleasant fruits, new and old, mm -hmm. which I have laid up for thee, O oh my beloved. He calls you your beloved, his beloved. Who doesn't want the Most High to call him their beloved? 
Okay, I guess nobody wants to most high to call him their brother. <laughs> and let's talk about rejection real quick. So how rejection spirits get in, other people reject you, you reject yourself, or you have a fear of being rejected. Demons, rejection demons, they first attack you in the womb. In Psalms 58, verse 3 and 4, it says, The wicked ones are estranged from the womb. They go astray from the belly, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. Like the deaf adder, he stops his ear. So, rejection spirits, your mother could have spoke curses over the fetus. Oh, this blank got me knocked up again. Oh, I hate this baby. Drugs. That can cause rejection. The mother could have been raped. It could have been a one night stand. The mother could have had stress. Demonic music. Feeling demonic music. Okay. An abusive man throughout, this is during pregnancy. Not found Christ, of course. If a woman holds unforgiveness, if a, wo if a woman is carrying a baby and she contemplates um, abortion, instantly rejection spirits come into the fetus. And instantly that baby now has rejection there. I mean, get yeah, rejection demons. Okay? Dysfunctional families is one that causes rejection demons in the family. A house out of a house of out of whack if um, a house out of whack is a haven for rejection demons. She's going to get free and healed. That's right. That's right. So, what else can rejection demons bring on? Rejection demons bring on verbal abuse, sexual abuse, abandonment, and physical abuse. Don't worry about it. She's in good hands. It sounds like you're giving birth. Yeah, that's right. Emotional symptoms. If you have a poor concept about yourself, if you have self-hatred towards yourself, anger and rage towards yourself, eating disorders, suicide, let's get Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Did you say verse 4? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Well, I think the Holy Ghost moved. That's right. <laughs> Go ahead. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blemish, mm -hmm. blame before him in love. Before him in love. Mental illness, chronic negative thoughts. Those are caused by rejection demons. Negative voices are caused by rejection demons. If you have nightmares, there's some type of rejection demon there. Repeat bad dreams all the time. Those bring on rejection demons. Rejection demons also bring on drugs, alcohol, and sex. Those vices. Now, Yeshua, he was rejected more than anyone in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if we if were of face from him. He was despised and was esteemed him not. Amen.
make my life better. That's a lie. That's the fiery ducks I was talking about. The devil is a liar. The demons sit up here and they tell you that. They tell you that. And now you're feeling guilty because you feel Because now it feels like you feel like it's you causing that. That's not you causing that. That's not you causing that. We gotta get that guilt out. Guilt is a thing. Being guilt will drive you to do other things. I can't do this. How many little ones you have? Just one. Adorable, right? Do anything for it, right? Or him. Him? Rejection demons. And what they do, they bring on schizophrenia. They bring on dissociative identity disorder, DID. They bring on borderline personality disorder, bipolar depression, and narcissism. Narcissism, wow. Fear based demons. That's what rejection demons bring on. They morph you into self hating yourself. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 and 15. It says, eagerly pursue peace and holiness with all, without which one, which one not see the Lord. Watching diligently that not any lack from the grace of the Most High, that no root of bitterness growing up may crowd in on you, and through this may be defiled. They morph you. They try to keep you from getting close to the Most High. Other rejection demons, fornication. Adultery? Where do you feel like that? You feel relief? Uh, that thing just went dormant. You didn't feel relief. It just went dormant. What happens is now, now that you're in prison, now that they know that they've been found out, they can quiet down. They can shut up. You feel a relief now. But later on, they're going to come back. We got to get them, we're going to get them things out. Envy. Boast. There we go. Envy, boast, won't listen, unmerciful, deceit, hate of the Most High, despiteful, and proud. Rejection demons also bring up and down Christians. That's rejection. Faith churches. They bring on, and I can tell, I can testify to that because I went to a couple of faith churches. And each time I got kicked out. Rejection. Failed ministries, being involved with failed ministries, failing relationships. If you go from job to job to job, that's the money. That means you can't be settled in one place. Job hopping is also, a, there's a hint of rejection there. You never finish anything. Now, men, that don't mean that, you know, your wife gives you a list and, you know, you don't finish that list. Because then the women would be like, I told you. No. You don't finish anything. And that call, that's rejection. Multiple words from lying prophets. That brings on rejection. You're going to have, you're going to have five thousand. There was this one prophet. All I heard, you're going to have five thousand dollars this year. Five thousand dollars never came. You start going to the mailbox looking for five thousand dollars and it never comes. That's a spirit of rejection. You blame everybody from your failures and you church hop. Church hopping is huge. If a person goes from church to church to church, that means that number one, either they are just spiritually weak or somebody sat up there and just insulted them. Your hat looks funny. Oh, I'm not going to this church no more. Your shoes look funny. Oh, you can't pray today. Well, if I can't pray today, then I ain't coming back. Spiritual vagabond. Yes. The spirit of vagabond. 
Rejection demons glow, goal is to block, and all demons goal is to block the Holy Spirit. Stop your spiritual gifts. Stop your financial blessings. Stop your calling and stop your faith. That's what the rejection demon does. Abandonment. Abandonment always starts in the womb. Let's get Psalms chapter 27 verse 10. Abandonment always starts in the womb. And it always starts with some type of word curse that was spoken over the fetus. People think that they can say anything they want. Women feel like, you know, they can say whatever they want and their baby's not affected. The baby is affected by everything and anything that goes in you and around you. So let's read that. Psalm chapter 27, verse 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Most High will take me up. See, when my father and mother, that's in the womb. Father and mother forsake you. Oh, I wish I didn't get her pregnant. Ugh. Yuck. That's, re that's abandonment. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 states for the purposes of which I'm planning for you a statement from the Most High purposes of peace and not for evil to give you a latter time of hope. Abandonment can affect your self-worth. Abandonment can affect how you are as a person. With all demons, abandonment has to be cast out. Abandonment is another stronghold. People who are adopted have a huge abandonment spirit. People who go from foster home to foster home to foster home. Huge abandonment spirit. Fathers leaving the home. Huge abandonment spirit. That thing needs to be cast out. Rebellion. And the best way to study rebellion is disobedience to the Most High and an opposite view. Anytime that you have an opposite view of what the Most High has, you have a rebellion spirit. Paul, I mean not Paul, Saul had a rebellion spirit. The Most High told him slaughter everything. Leave not one thing breathing. Saul also had a people pleasing spirit. That's something totally different. But you know what? Saul did not go and do what the prophet Samuel told him to do. He said, my men are hungry. And we're going to keep this king here for ransom. We're going to keep him. He didn't do what the Most High told him to. Let's, let's get um, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the world of the Most High, he has also rejected thee from being king. He reject you from being king. Rejection spirits. What verse was that? First Samuel chapter 15 verse 23. So what does rebellion mean? Rebellion means being contentious, being make angry, contend with dispute, stubborn-headed. I was stubborn-headed once. Stiff-necked, motivated by pride, stubborn rebellions, and a bad attitude against the Most High. Disobedience, define authority, make bitter, provoke, reject, not recognize, double rebellion in a rebellious house. Okay? Those are rebellion spirits. Let's get Proverbs chapter 17, verse 11. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Rebellion demons are very hard to get out. They are very strong to get out. Okay? When we're praying people through rebellion spirits, the things just do something to the gut causes convulsions in the gut. It's like a vice grip getting pulled, turned to your stomach. And it's squeezing. And it's squeezing. Because rebellion spirits don't want to leave. Classic example of rebellion is the children of Israel. They rebelled many times, right? The original rebellion came from Satan and his fallen angels. 
That's how rebellion started in the first place. Jezebel, a rebellious woman. Ahab was a rebellious man. Okay, so that's how rebellion starts. Divorce can cause rebellion can cause divorce. One or more families. Men don't want to take responsibility of their family. Feminism. That's another one. All the TV shows that are around, the, those of you who watch television, where the wife is the one who does everything right and the husband is a bumbling idiot. That's rebellion. Right now, sex, no restrictions. No restrictions on it whatsoever. Let's get Psalm 68.6. No restrictions. These are all spirits of rebellion. And they need to be cast out. The Most High sitteth in solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. The rebellious dwell in a dry land. Seducing spirits. Seducing spirits comes from the one meaning to deceive. We show that humans, that spirits attack humans by entering the frontal lobe of the brain, affecting judgment and control centers. When a person has been afflicted by seducing spirits for a long period of time, it's difficult to complete the deliverance because the spirits have been improperly identified more than other. Okay? So they kind of blend in with the person and with the person. Over a period, dementia starts to set in. And it gradually takes over the person's mind. That's what the seducing spirits do. Let's get James chapter 3, verse 15 through 13 through 15. Who is a wise man and endureth, endureth with knowledge among you? Let him show, shoot out of a good conversation mm -hmm. his works with meekness of wisdom. Mm -hmm. But if he have bitter envy and strife in his heart, glory not. Mm -hmm. Lie not against the truth. Lie not against the truth. James 1.8 says a double-minded man is unstable in his ways. Okay. Double-minded means two souls. The demons enter the brain of the child and create a fake or an imposter soul of the inner man. The demonic house then, the spirit, develops a different personality. A morphed personality. That's what the spirit does. A real person, the real person, then becomes buried inside that person. Because the fake soul is the one that does everything. What scripture was that? That was James 1.8. So the real person has to come out. Through deliverance, we have to get the, uh, the fake soul out of the person. That's what double-minded, that's what mental illness is. It's where you have two spirits. Well, not two spirits, you have two souls. You have a fake soul, and then you have the real person. The fake soul is the one who does the lying, the cheating, the stealing. Probably think that it's in another world, another dimension. That's what schizophrenia is. So what you have to do, it's a web. And in that web, you have to try to bifurcate and make the person see that they are a true person and that everything around them is a lie. We had a young lady who was, yes sir? Would that include alter egos? Yes. Alter egos. You have you call yourself like Beyonce calls herself whatever she calls herself. Oh, Sasha. Sasha. That's an alter ego. She needs deliverance along with other things. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sasha. So, mental illness brings on a poor concept of the person, self hatred, some type of rage or anger, suicide. Hatred for people, man or woman hating spirits, homosexual spirits. You always have chronic negative thoughts and you always have a murderous spirit. Okay?
Let's get second, um, second address, chapter seven. Verse 79 and 80. One of those who have shown scorn and have not kept the way of the Most High and who have despised His law and who have hated those who feared the Most High, such spirits shall not enter into habitation but shall immediately wander about in torment, ever grieving and sad in seven ways. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk quickly about familiar spirits. Familiar spirits. Um, some examples of familiar spirits would be when a father rapes a daughter and the daughter's conceived. That's a familiar spirit. The daughter can have spirits of rape or incest. The child will have spirits of incest or a bastard spirit. The father cursed himself and nine generations of his descendants he cursed his descendants with rape. He, he has loose familiar spirits on the family with repeated, repeating the same acts. The familiar spirits want to keep the generational curse after generation after generation, committing the same sins. So there's a sin in the family, and it goes generation to generation to generation. You wonder why families have a spirit of alcoholism on them. It's because that thing has stayed for generation to generation to generation. Another type of familiar spirits are church spirits. The religions of this world, all of them started with a familiar spirit. And they worship a familiar spirit. Allah is a familiar spirit. Confucius is a familiar spirit. Mother Mary is a familiar spirit. Jesus is a familiar spirit. They are demons. They are very strong demons. Why? Because how many Muslims are there in the world today? Millions. And they're following this one familiar spirit to hell. Buddha is a familiar spirit. Familiar spirits, they hold, um, they can be broken by using the most high laws of deliverance. Familiar spirits have been loosed on you by ancestral sins and you have loosed familiar spirits from sins of your descendants. Kundalini spirits are the strongest ones. They're in Christian churches. You ever go to a Christian church in um, Pentecostal church and everybody's whooping and hollering and you see people convulsion? Those are familiar spirits. Those are Kundalini spirits. If you look on India and you look up kundalini spirits on India, you'll see the exact same gyrations and the exact same movements that are going on in the Christian church. Or you see people you see that in the Christian church also. Holy Ghost dance, holy rollers, you see that same, those same movements in the Christian church. The exact same movements. Kundalini demons usually know a lot about scripture. Unfortunately, they can't, they can't seem to remember Mark 16, 17, where it says that we shall cast out demons in Yeshua's name. We must use the Most High to discern any evil spirit. Word of knowledge, your spirit man, godly prayer, counsel. And you have to be able to inspect your fruit daily. You can't go and start casting out familiar spirits, you still have a little something going on inside of you. Unclean spirits. These are the ones that attack the body. Fibromyalgia is an unclean spirit. Asthma is an unclean spirit. Cancer is an unclean spirit. Epilepsy, arthritis, insomnia is an unclean spirit. If you have stomach ulcers, those are unclean spirits. Lung illness, any type of genetic illness in the family, that's an unclean spirit. You have a history of heart disease in your family, that's an unclean spirit. If you have irritable bowels, 
or your bowels are just all messed up. Those are unclean spirits. If you have COPD, that's an unclean spirit. Anything that the doctors cannot diagnose, it's an unclean spirit. I, we don't have no clue on why your throat is like that. We'll just give you all these medications. You take all these medications and come back and we'll see if it's clear. No, those are unclean spirits. Fibromyalgia is very interesting. It attacks the nerves on the body. The demons attack the nerves on the body, making your entire body in pain. So what has to happen? First of all, there's a lot of self-hatred with that person. So we have to make the person love themselves. The person has to love themselves. Generally, there's some unforgiveness there. Fibromyalgia can be healed just like that. Just like that. Where you don't have pains in your body anymore. But you have to succumb to knowing who you are in Christ before you can be healed. Any type of, any type of head trauma, that's healing. Any type of mental illness that you've been diagnosed with and there's no head trauma, those are, those are unclean spirits. They have to be cast out. There's a difference between healing and deliverance. Sometimes you have to go through healing. If you stub your toe and it's bruised, that's not demonic. You just have to be healed. Sometimes it's deliverance. Where you stub your toe, you cuss out your wife, and you slap and kick the dog. That's when you need healing and deliverance. There's a difference. Sometimes you just need straight deliverance. You just come home, bust open the door, punch the dog, slap the wife, then jam your toe. Sometimes you need straight deliverance. Uh, so, let's get uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 23 to, through 28. We're going to show something. Yeah, Mark chapter 1. Uh, verses 23 through 28. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee? So see, the demons know the shire. So the demons are speaking. Wait a minute. We're not bothering anybody. Go ahead. Thou, Yeshia of Nazareth, Art thou come to, de to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of Ahia. Mm -hmm. And Yeshia rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. Mm -hmm. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Mm -hmm. And they were all amazed, and so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this thing? What new, doc new doctrine is this? What new doctrine is this? That's what churches will say. If you go in their church and you see somebody manifesting with a kundalini spirit because the music is playing and they're doing all this and you have a pastor who's undiscerned, praise God! And you walk in there knowing deliverance and you say, that's a kundalini spirit. I come against that kundalini spirit, and that spirit, wait a minute, we don't have nothing, what are you doing? And they start acting crazy, they start going through deliverance, and then the church people are like, what manner of doctrine is this? <laughs> Read. <laughs> For with authority commanded he, even the unclean spirit, and they do obey him. Mm -hmm. And immediately... His fame spread abroad throughout all the regions round about Galilee. Right. So let's bring out 11 facts about this scripture. Number one, the unclean spirit was inside the man, right? Okay. The man was in a church. Okay. He was inside of a church. The spirit had a voice and spoke. Yes, spirits do speak through people. Okay. The spirit recognized Christ. Demons recognize Christ when he comes. Demons recognize Yeshua's name when it's heard. 
and they react to it. The spirit manifests in the anointed one's presence. So the spirit starts to manifest in Christ's presence. The Holy Spirit is present here. That young lady in the back, the spirit of the Holy Spirit is here. So the spirits start to manifest themselves. Okay? My brother right here, his stomach was going crazy. The spirit inside of him was manifesting in the presence of the Holy Spirit. No spirit can stay in the presence of the Holy Spirit. None. That's why that young lady is being set free. The spirit wanted to be left alone. Demons don't want confrontation. They want to be left alone so they can continue to work in your body and cause sickness, disease, illness in your body. There was more than one spirit in the man. Remember in the scripture it said, leave us alone. That means that he had multiple demons. Not just one demon, but several demons inside of him. They said, leave us alone, Yeshaya. We're not bothering nobody. The unclean spirit did the speaking. It wasn't the man who was speaking. When you are praying somebody through deliverance, it's not them telling you you're a snot nose, this, that, this, and that. Go to hell, this, and that. That's not the person who's talking. If you take offense, you will be you will get a transfer. If you take offense from what somebody is telling you during when the spirit is speaking through deliverance, if you take offense. You just got yourself a transfer. A transfer is something that, a demon that's foreign that gets into your body. And you'll know when you get one. Because if something foreign comes in your body, you automatically are going to know something's not right. So taking offense because you allowed some demon to sit up there and say, you're worthless, you're not this and that. I remember you did this and that. Because they will do it. And then you say, what? slapping a person you just took offense okay so the uh, the spirits were afraid that Christ came to destroy them that's what he does when we call on the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit ain't gonna sit there and hold the demon hand and come on out no they are going to be destroyed the spirits knew who Yeshua was the Holy One of God Demons know who Yeshua is. They know the name. We don't for some reason. The unclean spirit was uncivil and confrontational. This is very frequent in the deliverance ministry when demons are confrontational. Who do you think you are? I had a demon once tell me, how can you pray for that woman in that name? You're not the anointed. I had a demon once tell me that. And I'm looking, I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, hold on a minute, sister. You, right there, right now. Come out of her right now, devil. <laughs> See, in deliverance, you have to be by deliverance seat. You have to be able to cast out here and cast out here, too, at the time. <laughs> oh, that was something, that was a made-up term. You can use that yourself. It's not copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> Unclean spirits are morally corrupt, sexually perverted, lustful, lewd with thought and life. Okay? Now, we're going to... I'm going to tell you this about Jezebel. I'm going to just say this. We're just going to break it down like this. Men cannot have Jezebel spirits. Because Yeshia gave us authority over the church. So no man can have a Jezebel spirit. That's impossible. Okay? Right? I, I, I did some research on Jezebel, and they, uh -huh. they, and they say that men can have a Jezebel spirit. Okay. Look at all those traits. Let's get scripture. Okay. Let's get scripture. Because typically it is women, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, oh no, this is Ahab. I'm sorry. Alright, this is the Ahab spirit. I have Ahab first. Okay, so, hold on to that thought. With the Ahab spirit, men who don't work, 
men who are alcoholics or men who are workaholics enjoy childish things. They enjoy soaking, temper tantrums, and drinking. They call his wife mom, mama, or want to be a little mama's boy. They are attracted to the Jezebel type. They giving him excuses to commit adultery. He doubts his own ability. He dislikes God and any authority figure. He's unable to cope with his wife's problems and he tunes her out. He attempts to please his Jezebel wife by letting her have her way. He may become com, um, combative at one point. At one time, Ahab's spirits will become combative. Okay? He plays the guessing game. What can I do to please her? He doesn't want to lead his household according to the Most High. What can a man do to counter Ahab's spirit? Is the first thing you have to do is admit that you have one. Second thing that you have to do is it begins with you as the man. You have to start acting in the ownership of your home. Men who don't pray for their families, men who don't say the blessing at the table, men who don't read the Bible out loud at home or don't read the Bible at all, men who don't speak in the name of Yeshua. Men who will not praise the Most High. There's deliverance for men who have Jezebel spirit. I mean Ahab spirits. Okay. Now let's get Revelation chapter two. Verse nineteen to th through twenty-three. I know thy works and charities and service mm -hmm. and faith and thy patience and thy works. And the last to be more than the first. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffered, sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to mm -hmm. teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, mm -hmm. and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Oh, right there. Who was given authority to teach in the church? Okay, read that scripture again. Now, withstanding, I have a few things against thee, mm -hmm. because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, mm -hmm. which calleth herself a prophetess. Now, there's nothing wrong with women calling themselves prophetess. You want to call yourself prophetess, whatever? Whatever. But read that, read the next part. To teach and to subdue my servants. To teach and to seduce my servants. Women are, there are not to be women pastors. Period. Yeshia gave man the authority. So women cannot teach. Read. To commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Mm -hmm. And I give her space to repent of her fornication. And she repented not. See, the misconception with Jezebel spirits is this. Jezebel spirits have to be in authority. Especially in the church. They have to be in authority. They have to be in an authoritative figure. In order to disrupt the church. Men don't have to be in authority. Men are already in the authority figure from Christ. So, the Jezebel spirit... Her main goal in when it comes up in ministry is to destroy the ministry. And how does she destroy the ministry? Ministry by teaching, by putting false doctrines, by putting discord, by trying to get and seduce with the pastor, try to get somebody in an authority figure. That's what Jezebel does. She trumps herself over man. Juanita Bynum has a huge Jezebel spirit. What's the other one in Texas? What is her name? Joyce Myers? Oh, yeah. Huge Jezebel spirit. So see, the Jezebel spirit cannot be in a man because man was given authority over the church in the first place. I've never prayed for a man with a Jezebel spirit. Never. Ahab? Oh yeah. But never prayed for a man with a Jezebel spirit. Men can't have Jezebel spirits. Okay? Does that answer your question? Continue reading. Behold, 
I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Mm -hmm. And I will kill her children with death, and all the and all the churches shall know that I am He which searches the reins and hearts. <laughs> And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the frequent questions. Is, can man have a Jezebel spirit? Yeshia gave us authority okay, that we cannot have a Jezebel spirit. He read in verse 20, notwithstanding I have a few things against thee, that because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which call herself a prophetess, and teach to seduce my servants to commit fornication. Okay. Here, Yeshia is specifically emphasizing the word that you are a permit that you permitted that woman, that Jezebel. That is because Yeshia was referring to Jezebel in the Old Testament, who was known for undermining the authority of her husband. That's what a Jezebel spirit is: undermining the authority of her husband. The husband says, "You know what?" We're gonna we're going to spend forty dollars at Walmart. The wife, well, why are we spending forty dollars? Can't you, we can spend sixty dollars at Walmart? See, that's undermining the authority of the husband. <laughs> and I'm just using that as a broad as a broad example. So men don't go to Walmart and say, you know what? I'm only gonna spend twenty dollars, woman. <laughs> Elder Rosen said that all I'm going to spend is $20. And you best to shut your mouth, Jesse. <laughs> Guys, don't do that because there will be a frying pan with your name on it when you get home. So don't do that. Okay? But that's the reason why Men cannot have Jezebel spirits. And that's the reason why, reason why women cannot have Ahab spirits. Women cannot have an Ahab spirit. They just can't. I've never prayed for any woman that had an Ahab spirit. It's not possible. Those spirits are linked directly to male or female. Just like spiritual husbands and spiritual spouses. Have you all heard us pray spiritual husbands and spouses off of people? A spiritual husband cannot be in a man unless he's homosexual. Now we have encountered that, and that's something ugly. A spiritual wife cannot be in a woman unless she's a lesbian. Then that spiritual wife has to be removed. Are y'all following? Yep. We're almost done. So, are you going to explain that spiritual husband and wife? Yes. I am going to explain spiritual husbands and wife. How do they get in? They get in through some type of childhood trauma. Some type of childhood trauma or some type of abuse or rape. And what happens is that the spiritual spouse lays dormant. It always gets through childhood and it lays dormant. And what happens is that when the person becomes of age and they have relationship after relationship after relationship, broken, 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 the spiritual spouse is manifesting. And at some point in time, you start looking at that, spot, at that other person as somebody who is nasty or somebody who's just not worthy to spend your time with. That's the spiritual spouse acting up because the spiritual, the spiritual spouse wants you for him or herself. It's not about sex with the spiritual spouse. They don't care about sex. They want the body. So what happens is that as time goes on, it gets stronger and stronger. You have more broken relationships you can't keep a relationship going on. Eventually, you can't keep a job going on. You're going job after job after job after job. Eventually, after you've broken up relationship after relationship, 
then job after job. Eventually that thing comes for the kill. Sickness in your body. Some type of illness in your body. Weird illness. Lupus. Weird illness. A lot of times that's caused by a spiritual spouse that's laid in the body for far too long. Also some type of self-hatred or some type of self-disgust. But eventually, if the spirit stays in the body, especially a stronghold like a spiritual husband or spouse, eventually the person is going to get sick. Eventually, you're going to succumb and it's going to kill you. And what's going to happen is that if you had a daughter or a son, then that spouse, when you die, it goes to them. And they're infected. And then they go through the same thing. Your children start having broken relationships. Your children start going from job to job to job. Eventually, your child gets sick. And what happens? The demon goes. See, the demons don't die because your body dies. The demon just goes to the next available relative. And that's what happens. They go to another relative. Same thing. This is just like a generational curse. They just go from family member to family member. They look for the weakest link. They're not going to come against somebody who's strong and the most high. They go after and look for the weakest link. And when they get to that weakest link, then they attack that weak link. Right? That's kind of like an overview on spiritual spouses. It gets much more deeper than that. Okay? All right. Do we have any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Do you recommend some reading? I'm sorry? Do you recommend some reading? The Bible. Any other? No. There you go. The reason why I don't recommend reading Deliverance, book, you know what? Let me check that back. There is one Deliverance book that I highly recommend. It's called Pigs in the Parlor by Frank and Ida Mae Hammond. I highly recommend that book and that book only. Other deliverance ministries book, deliverance ministry books, no. Because Frank and Ida, I did the research on Frank and Ida Mae Smith, and they had a deliverance ministry for um, about 45, 50 years, I believe. And they encountered every single type of spirit that you can possibly encounter. Uh, one of your hand in your pamphlet, there's a sheet and it has two hands on it okay that came from pigs in the parlor it talks about demons and it talks about um the stronghold on demons the hands yes that one it talks about schizophrenia okay but you can pretty much look at that and um just basically look at it <laughs> Pigs in the Parlor by Ida and Frank Hammond. They also have a children's deliverance book that I would also highly recommend. And it's called Deliverance for Children. What? Yes. Deliverance for Children. We had a deliverance ministry for about two years where we did solely children. And it was it's probably the best, the most beautifulest thing I've ever seen in my life. I get tired of praying adults out of deliverance. Come out, come out. But children, it's different. You tell a child, there's something going on in your stomach. And it's not good. We need to get it out. Okay. <laughs> it's not like adults. Well, um, I had some guacamole. And... Uh, it's not like adults. Children are so, and a lot of children, it's very quick deliverance. True story. I was um, in a deliverance ministry, and we came across a young boy who was 10 years old, and he had um, something in his foot. The doctors didn't know what it was, but he was walking on a limp. The young boy was playing video games. Children, um, parents, Take away the video games. They bring in demons 
that you would not believe. Especially the ones where they're shooting. Okay? Get rid of them. So this young boy was playing um, um, God of War. He was playing something else. Um, um, he was playing something, something else too. Oh, Assassin's Creed. He was playing that in Assassin's Creed too. He told me that. So... I said, okay, well, he was saying that there's something wrong with my foot. The mother was saying there's something wrong with his foot. So I said, okay, we're going to pray for him. We started praying video games out of him. This young boy, maybe 10 years old, was heathen like a grown man. One of these, about the same size of that bucket right there, almost filled to the rim. Just puking, puking, puking. At that moment, the Holy Spirit said to me, video games are bad. Bad demons and video games for children. So if you have children, take away the video games because there's spirits that are inside of the video games that transform while they're playing the video games and the spirits get into the, into the mind. Music. Be careful on what you listen to when you're listening to music. Especially Christian music. Be careful. I did a teaching on, on Satan and music. And there are certain groups. When you back mask. They're worshipping Satan. Newsboys. I'm just going to put it out there. Newsboys was one. Where are my daughters at? They're not out here. There was three other groups. And they're pretty popular today. With you know so called Christian people. Mary Mary, that's another demonic group. You may not even know who Mary Mary is. That's okay. Who? Well, Cray. No. Hillsong. Hillsong, uh, I don't know about. Lecrae? No. Demonic. Why is that? Because there was also, he, was, he almost signed a contract with Jay Z. Enough said, right? So you have to be careful. I think Hillsong too. Hillsong too? I don't know Hillsong. I never heard of them, but hey. If they're on the cover and they got one eye covered, are they standing there with symbols? Oh! One eye covered? Yeah, that's the, yeah. Hillsong? No. One eye covered, that's, we all know what that is, right? Okay. All right. Healing. Who? Tommy Lynn? Tommy Mac, Matthew, Tommy Lynn. Uh, Toby Mac? Or, yeah. No. Get him out of there. If you got that stuff in your house, get it out of there because it's causing spirits in your house. P.O.D.? P.O.D. No. Get it out. Get it out. Third day. Third day. Get it out. Get it out. In fact, third day was the one... They have a song where if you back basket, they're worshiping Satan. They're worshiping Satan. So be mindful of that. Really quick, healing. Okay? Healing the body is very if you if you if you follow it correctly, it's it's almost easy. How the Holy Spirit just comes in and heals somebody. Back pain is the very, is the most is the easiest thing to heal. Can I have a volunteer? Sure. Come right up. I'm gonna give you a little demonstration on healing. Take two, won't you? Yeah. I'll take two. My wife got out here to help. I'll take two. Sure. Back pain is very easy to heal. Okay. You have back pain now? Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah? That's why I put my hands up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's do this. Force back pain. All right. Let's do this. Extend your arms. Okay. Bring them together. You're way off. I know. You're way off. <laughs> well, I got you're bad fingers, too. <laughs> No, you're way off. This is way off. Okay. That's your left arm? Yeah. Okay. Well, I have a left back injury. 
That was from sliding on third base in 1989. And you've been walking around with that ever since? <laughs> yeah, but Why did you go to the Christian church? <laughs> but it didn't, it didn't manifest until I was 48 years old. Okay. Yeah. And then now I just take uh, fish oil. So it softens the sciatica, so it, it takes the sciatica pain from seven well, down to one. I know something is fish oil. <laughs> right, it takes it from seven to one. Bring them in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Now you are a little even. He's more even. <laughs> yeah, you're more even than me. He's, he's way out of whack. I'm way out of whack. Your left arm is a slight bit off. Okay. Are you on the lower left? Are you surprised? Shocker! <laughs> okay, have a seat. Can we get them to have a seat? Because now we're going to measure your ankles. Okay. And when your body's out of whack, that causes pain. I already know my out of whack. <laughs> okay. I'm going to show you the power of the Most High. Where's your, oh, where's your ankles? Uh, let me take my boots. Yeah, I got to feel your ankles. Okay. You're a pervert! No. <laughs> let's see. No, let's see. Okay, I have to be this one. Am I touching your ankles? You are. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, your right leg is a little longer than your left. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pray and command that left arm to grow back. Wait, which one was it? Your left? Yeah, it was longer. Left arm. Yeah, the arm. was longer, yeah. Okay. We're going to command your right arm to come out. Okay? In the name of Yeshaya. Stand up. Father, your son is here, and your son wants to be healed of back pain. I'm praising you in advance because I know that you're going to do it. I'm giving you all the glory because I know that you're going to do it. Right now, we command this right arm in the mighty name of Yeshaya to grow out, to grow out, bring them together, grow out. Grow out. Yes. Now, in the mighty name of Yeshaya. Oh, this thing's being stubborn. Okay. Come out now in the mighty name of Yeshaya. Come out this arm. Stretch this arm forth now. 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 Is that even? Amen. Glory. Glory. Let us see. Father, Glory. and we're not done yet. We're going to do the ankles. Father, in the mighty name of Yeshaya, right now, this leg is to come out in the mighty name of Yeshaya. These legs are to even up. Right now, hold on. Right now, in the mighty name of Yeshaya. We cancel the assignment of back pain right now. Cancel the assignment of back pain right now in the mighty name of Yeshai. Spread your legs out. Put them together. Test his ankles. Put your fingers on his ankles. Are they even? Yeah. Yeah, they are? Yeah. Stand up. It's a miracle. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gloria, Haya. That was good. Here. That's good. I'll take it. Move. Thank you. Yes, no, move your body around. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm gonna go sit down now. Okay. How does it feel? Yeah. Better than when I walked up here. I want you to do something that you haven't done with your back. Okay. Backflip. What would you like me to do? <laughs> I don't know what your restrictions used to be. Well, I have a great deal with movement. It's just the pain is there. That's all. Okay. I have great mobility. Okay, great mobility. Is the pain still there? 
No, not like it was. We're better already. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. See, the thing of it is, is that I don't like it when they say they feel bad. I don't like that. I don't like that. That 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 that's a failure to me. <laughs> Feeling better is not good. That's not good enough. I want you to feel like you did when you were 12 years old. I want that back to feel like that. Okay. I think I can remember 60 years ago. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. All right. Father, we want 100%. Healing in the mighty name of Yashah. Yes. Right now. 100% yes. healing yes. in the mighty name of Yashah. Yes. Come on. Now. Yes. Now. Yes. Now. Yes. Now. Yes. Now. Yes. We want 100% healing. We don't want I feel better. Right Woo! Now. Right. Right. Before I escape, would you put on your fingers and stick them in my ears? The <laughs> <laughs> Holy Spirit didn't do that. Oh, yes. So sit here. here. Both of them. Both it's both of them. <laughs> Father, in the mighty name of Yeshaya, right now we declare healing. Right now, in the name of Yeshaya. Right now. Now. Healing. In the mighty name of the shy. Now, somebody say something. Don't look. Miles. Did you hear that? I heard a noise. I don't know what it was. Okay. Somebody further. Somebody say something. Did you hear that? I heard a noise. I did not distinguish. I heard a noise too. Somebody needs to actually. Speak up loud. Vocate a word, please. Say 22 minutes. <laughs> Hold on. Can you hear me talking to you right now, Miles? Can you understand what I'm saying to you? I do understand what you're saying to me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Now, this was the distance. Was you able to hear somebody speaking to you from this distance before? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Have you ever, was this a dis, was this problem, problematic, problematic for you? I don't think I would have heard her. Okay. No, from me to you, he wouldn't be able to understand me before. Okay, let's do this. Somebody in the back row, please say something. Something. Did you hear that? Hearing and understanding are not the same. I heard a noise. <laughs> okay. But you didn't understand it. I didn't understand what Okay. You liar. You liar. Come out of his ears. We declare his healing. Now in the mighty name of the shot. Stop being stubborn. Loose his eardrums now. Loose his eardrums now in the mighty name of the shire. Don't speak, just accept. Loose his eardrums now in the mighty name of the shadow. Something. Something. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 We're making progress. <laughs> okay. Wow. Somebody go to Avondale. <laughs> Glory, Father. So see, <laughs> spirits clog up in the brain, in the ears. Faith heals. The Holy Spirit heals. I have faith that he's going to be healed. He has right. faith he's going to be healed. Right. Therefore, the healing is going to happen. Yes. Right? right? Yeah. Okay, so who, who was my who's my volunteer back there? Raise your hand. Okay, get ready. Okay? Because he heard, shut up or something. I guess somebody told well, he him said, shut up she a said lot. something. <laughs> so, he heard something. Okay? But we want him to actually hear a word. Don't say the word something again, though. Okay? <laughs> All right, Father. 100% healing in these ears right now. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we declare and decree it right now. 
that we want 100% healing. This demon is being rebellious against the Most High, and we cancel its assignment right now in the mighty name of Yeshua. We declare healing now in the mighty name of Yeshua. Healing now. You are healed. I am healed. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. All you need is faith. That's all the person needs is faith. Faith plus faith equals healing. Glory. Y'all didn't know I was a, a math science, a math genius, right? <laughs> no, I'm a scientist. I was about to say scientist. That's the math. All right. Same thing with you. Arms out. Bring them forth. Father, we declare. Well, I forgot which one it was. Right. Actually, this one that broke this bone when I was yeah. four years old. Okay. It snapped in half. Okay. And then it broke again. Two weeks later, they had to reset it. So it's curved. And it's already healed. Yeah, it's, a, it's had 50 years to heal. So okay. that's why one arm that's slightly shorter, <laughs> or the right arm will be slightly shorter because of that. It won't be after we're done. Okay. Okay. So the right arm? Right. No. Right arm, right? Okay. Are you sure? It looks like the left. I don't know. Where it's the right. Well, no, if you can see, this is not the broken arm. This arm has this bow. Okay. Right. I mean, it's been healed all these years, but I'm just saying. It's beautiful. Father, we give you glory, and we thank you in the mighty name of Yeshua. We will command this right arm to come out in the mighty name of Yeshua. Come out in the mighty name of Yeshua. Come out in the mighty name of Yeshua. Grow, 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 grow. Extend, 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 extend. Now in the mighty name of Yeshua. Thank goodness I didn't have to keep calling it and then have to go out longer than the other one, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that happen before. Okay, arms out. Bring your arms back in. She's going to check them. <laughs> Did he cheat? Actually, you know what's so weird? What's that? My right shoulder. So like <laughs> your, right, your right shoulder was moving? Yeah. <laughs> Even? Okay. Have a seat. Looks even? <laughs> okay. All right. Check his ankles again. I forgot which one was wrong. Hey, we want to hear how she feels. Both of them got the little. Come on. Good. Good. Bring them on up here. Come on up here, right there. Hey, woo! Boy, Father. Oh, Look at that. Right leg. Okay. Right leg is shorter. Right leg. Put him on the bottom. The right leg is shorter. Oh, it is? Right leg. Oh, it's in there. I don't know if I'm sitting straight. Okay. Glory. Okay. So we command right now that the right leg is to grow in the mighty name of Yeshaya. The right leg is to grow in the mighty name of Yeshaya. Grow in the mighty name of Yeshaya. Grow, right leg, grow. Look at it moving. Grow, right now. Grow, right now. You should have had him turn this way so everybody can see. Okay. Put your legs out. Bring them in. Line them up. Look and see. Put your ankles. Is our fingers touching our ankles? Yeah. Okay. He's even. Yeah. He's even, brother. Oh, let him say. Yeah. Do you see yourself? Oh. Yeah, they see me. Either. Stand up. I'm okay. about to get your back heel. Okay. All right. Father, we give you glory and praise. We thank you because you do all this. We're just vessels. 
In the mighty name of Yeshua, we declare healing right now. Right here. Healing right now in the mighty name of Yeshua. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Right now. In the mighty name of Yeshua. Now. Lord. In the coccyx. Right Is the pain still there? Yeah, but I have arthritis on this hip. Okay, oh, did you buy arthritis? It came on when I was 15. So <laughs> and I'm okay. okay. now, and it just happened, you know, over the years. Okay. I was always so healthy. Big old. Big old. Yeah. And then this yeah, side, the, the sciatica, wow. was actually when I slid on third base, I hit so hard. Okay. And then I pushed a, did something. Then I went to oh, see a chiropractor. He tried to shove me off the table like he wanted to hurt me more, and I just okay. gave up on it and never did it. Okay. Then when I was 48, started hurting, so I was taking fish oil. All it does is take the pain down. See, a lot of times when people are going through healing, they want to give you their life story. <laughs> the deliverance minister doesn't want to hear life story. He wants healing. Right? He wants healing. All right. Yeah. No more life stories. Down here and back here. Pain still there? Yeah. Okay. Not as not as much. My sister. What's her name? Cheryl. Okay. You have to forgive Cheryl. Okay. Whatever it is that she's done, it doesn't matter. Okay. So you have to forgive her. Truly forgive her. Because we test the spirits. Okay. I don't know if you truly forgave her or not. I'm going to run you through a little test. So, what you want to do is you want to just say, you know what, whatever happened between you and her, you want to forgive her, you want to say it out. Okay, go ahead. Thank you guys for coming. Oh, did they give a testimony? Oh, okay. Give me a testimony before you go. We want to hear about you being here. This is not going to continue if I'm back. Okay. Okay. Alright, you guys, listen up. How do we do this? How do we do it? Just tell Donald real loud what happened. Right. So, I don't have it was the hardest experience in my life. Uh, but this still got in. It was like Something that. came out? Yeah, like, Move. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I was in the hospital or anything. Thank you. Uh, I want to hear from Mama. Let her know. I can look at Mama's face and tell something. Yeah. What's going on, Mama? She's been sick since 2009 with young brain neuropathy. Neuropathy? You get Complex that off the feet? syndrome. Uh, uh -huh. Where she can't move. Okay. Why you didn't yeah, take her to a, a Christian baby. church? <laughs> Donald said, come here. <laughs> <laughs> You all have to be careful because Satan will try to steal your deliverance from you. Right. Be careful. You have be, to be mindful. mindful. Okay. The people that upset you, you make you angry. You that they the usually house. before you all can leave here, someone will be calling yeah. and trying to text. Stay away from those people for a couple of days till you get stronger. Okay. Right. Don't yeah, there's a lot of guilt going on. Rest. They say it's like a wound that's healing, so you don't want to go out and kill someone. Did they pray for you? No, he never said anything. He need what? Guilt. I had guilt earlier. I felt a little bit of guilt when they were she there. She was in there praying. She was going through. She was interrupting my teaching with all her yelling. Okay. <laughs> so, he was feeling guilty. And he was starting to, you know, tear up and everything. So there's some guilt in there. Oh, okay. You gotta get that out. You trying to leave here with that in there like that? Well, uh, I mean, I was feeling good better now, but I mean, I'll never be the only one that gets free. Better is <laughs> not working. You gotta be completely here. You don't want to take that. I'm 100%. Twist. They're gonna pray for you. It's you something you haven't done before. Actually, you have full motion. You have full motion? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you have to pick that up. You used to be able to pick that up. Keep going, keep going, go, 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 go. Heal, heal. Now, 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 now. Look 
spit it out. He needs prayer for diabetes, too. Oh, I know I got diabetes. I'm all messed up. <laughs> diabetes? Oh, dude, I got glaucoma. I got diabetes. I got the esophagus. Hold on a second. Everybody, please stop saying that you have this and you have that. I'm getting irritated right now. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you can buy it on a grocery store shelf, you don't have anything. Satan is trying to afflict you with diabetes. Satan is trying to afflict you with neuropathy. Why are you not listening to your older sister? What's wrong with you? That's what it is. Love yourself. Yeah. That's a no. You have, <laughs> to love you have to love yourself. You have to love yourself and know that the most high created you and the most high don't make mistakes. That's right. So everything about you is perfect in his eyes. That's right. Everything is perfect about you, period. Okay. No self hatred. No, uh, sometimes. <coughs> That's a lie. Okay? You're fearfully and wonderfully made, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. right? Right. Why is it that everybody else is saying something and you're not saying anything? <laughs> you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, Speak it yeah, out of your yeah, mouth. Father, we cancel the assignment of diabetes in the pancreas. In the mighty name of Yeshaya, we cancel the sickness of diabetes in the mighty name of Yeshaya. We declare right now that diabetes come out of this man right now. Yes. We bind the tentacles of diabetes right now in the mighty name of Yeshaya. Right now. Let it right now. Right now. Come out this diabetes. The diabetes. We cancel your assignment right now. In the mighty name of Yeshaya. Diabetes, you are a lie. Come out. Come out right now. Toxins and sickness from the insulin. Come out right now. In the mighty name of Yeshaya. We declare it right now. That the pancreas be healed right now. In the mighty name of Yeshaya. Oh, no, it ain't now, brother. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we your head. Yeah. Come on. Come on out. Come on, right now. Right now. Diabetes, right. we cancel your assignment, you liar. In the mighty name of Yashai. Right now. Come out in the mighty name of Right now. Come out. Diabetes, come out. Come out. Come out. In Yashai's name. Come out. Self-hatred. Come out. 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 Come Come on, self-hatred. Come on, self-hatred. Come on, 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 come Come out right now. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Come on. Come on now. Get out. Let it go. Come on, Craig. Let it go. Let it go. Like this. Come on. You're going to be healed, Craig. Come on. Let it go. Or last year. I just stopped smoking. But you still smell it. I know. It's coming out. Mm-hmm. 
can smell the nicotine it's coming really out. Coming out. That's what right right it's now, all toxins. It's the toxins. <laughs> all toxins coming yeah. out. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Come on out right now. Come on out right now. Come on. 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 The girl we just picked her time that you spent at that. I don't know what that is. The two young people who picked up to me. But you're beginning to pay. But we're going to bring her Thank you. Take that head off. Cover your head. There you go. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. There you go. There you go. You feel any tightness? A little bit. That's that self hatred. Right here, self hatred. One out. Right now, I can't even right now, Just like clock. And eventually your body starts to turn on you. Because the human body. 